Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a player list, like a custom player list where your name and anybody else who joins your game's name will be displayed. To start off, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in here and then show you guys exactly how I made it. So first I inserted a screen GUI and then, you know, I named it player GUI. Or not player GUI, sorry, player list. There you go. Then what you want to insert is a frame. Now in this frame there's a thing called a property under data called anchor point. You want to set the first value to one. Then go all the way down to position, make the X value, the scale value, make that one. And then you can resize that as I uh, as you want. You know, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm also going to recolor and make it transparent. There you go. Then in here, I'm going to add a scrolling frame. So now for this, I'm going to delete all that. Put 1, comma, 0, comma, 0.8, comma, 0. And then take this uh, all the way to the bottom. There you go. Now the reason I'm doing it like this, well actually we can do it 0 0.9. Act, uh, 0 0.9, can we? Yeah, we can do 0 0.9. Then in here add a text label. Size would be 1 comma 0 comma 0 0.1 comma 0. And that should fill up the top. There you go. So now in the scrolling frame, I don't really want the scroll bar there. So we're going to go ahead and put that on transparent. Make the scrolling frame transparent. For this, we're going to make that transparent as well. Uh, as this is just going to be players. Uh, player title. It's just there for the show. You don't actually have to add that. But you know, we all have our different um players in game. I'm getting all fancy now. There you go. So there you go. That looks a lot neat. So in the scrolling frame, we're gonna go ahead and add a uh, a grid UI layout. So just type UI, and then it should be the first one that pops. That UI grid layout. Just add that into the scrolling frame. Now you want to go ahead and add a another frame. In the frame, add a text label so for the text label we just want to go ahead and make the size 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 and it should be the same for the frame and the frame we're not going to touch since that is controlled by the grid layout so go to the grid layout go ahead and click on that then for the cell size we want to go delete everything in the cell size make it 1 comma 0 comma uh, 0 comma 40? Uh, yeah, okay, that works. And then actually just go ahead and do 1.04. Okay, wait, that doesn't work. So just leave it on 1 since that's the scrolling frame. We can just go ahead and move this over just a tad. You don't have to, but I prefer that. So in the frame, oh, we're going to go ahead and call this uh, template uh, text label. Put this to a name then uh, go ahead and make this your own so we're gonna go ahead make this transparent we don't want that uh, I want to roundify it just to give it an extra look uh, you don't have to obviously that's all up to you personal preference of course there you go see that just looks very very creative um, therefore I'm going to actually make this or roundify this as well. There, there you go. See, it looks very cool. I'm a cool guy now. So in the play, in the scrolling frame, template name. All right. So I don't like that font. So let's go with like a cartoon font. There you go. And text scaled, perfect. All right. So take the template and place that in replicated storage. Uh, now we don't want to get confused. So I'm going to delete the old template and add the new one into there so now we're done with all the setting 
up. So now what we want to do is go ahead in the player list and add a local script. All right. So first of all, what we want to do is create the function that's going to clone the template into the player's game. So first call local function, uh, function, and then the two little uh, brackets. And in here, call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it temp, which is short for template or temperature, whatever you want. Uh, then what you want to do is um, just go the space down and it should automatically add the end. If not, just add it yourself. All right, so now you want to call this local frame is equal to script. Oh, oh actually, no. Game dot uh, replicate storage dot template, then clone uh, frame dot parent is equal to game. Oh, actually, script dot parent dot frame dot scrolling. Fr no, scrolling frame dot. Oh, scrolling from that's where we want it then frame dot name is equal to plr dot name now also make sure in these brackets over here add plr which is short for player or you can just put a uh, player which is defining the local player player dot name uh, then what you want to do is go ahead frame dot name so in frame, there's this folder called name, uh, and then we want to get the text value of this so we can actually see the player's name. Frame dot name dot text is equal to player dot name, and then frame dot visible is equal to true. So that's pretty much it for this. Uh, you so also make sure the frame is uh, to uh, not visible just in case of a few things I don't know what did I just make invisible I made something invisible Ew. Okay, that's invisible that shouldn't be invisible okay cool there you go so now the next function what we're gonna do is game dot players dot player added uh, connect function and then PLR once again in the brackets over there or player you know personal preference then what we're going to do is when the player joins we want to run the temp function that we just created which is the template function and then also add player into there so your next function is going to be a for loop so every time a player joins for instance it's going to run a for loop so then for or not function sorry for uh, underscore PLRS or uh, what can I do players yeah sure that works in peers then you want to go game dot players uh, ga game dot players get children do um, then run the function again, temp, and then just players. Then what you want to do is add the last function, which is when the game player removes game that players that player removing connect function two brackets inside the brackets once again to find the player, and then uh, bracket down. Then in here you're gonna make a for loop. So for i v in pairs uh, so now what we would actually want to do is for define the scrolling frame which would be script dot parent dot frame dot scrolling frame get children so we want to get all the children in the frame S and this is also going to get the players that are in our game dot players uh, or the player that is leaving so we want to get uh, see if there is a player the player is leaving we want to see if the player that is leaving is on the leaderboard uh, so to do that what we're going to do is if v so this is going to get um, a value dot name and uh, plr dot name so now it's going to see if it finds the player name in here as well as in game dot players then it's going to 
then v colon remove and then that should remove it what am i missing oh do and then and perfect and there you go that is as simple as it is oh also first of all you do not want to forget to disable the original gui because that could mess you up pretty badly so to do that it's actually really easy all you got to do is game dot uh or yeah game dot uh, started gui uh set core gui enabled then you want to do oh uh, what was it enum uh enum dot core gui type dot player list uh, comma and then just set as false and that should disable the original uh, player list and then there you go perfect there you go your own GUI is done now if you want any videos in the future just let me know and I will go ahead and make a video for you guys thanks so much for watching I know this was a long video um, but I tried to make it as fast as I could. So go ahead, hit that like button, and uh, subscribe for more content. And let me know what you want to see. Alright, thanks for watching.